Hello, this is Sherry Gallagher with Technicon Company Incorporated. This presentation is going to be on ISO 9001-2015 Section 5, Leadership. Now what is meant by leadership in the standard? Leadership means top management must be involved. Leadership in ISO 9001-2015 impacts top management. The changes in the 2015 edition is the expectation that top management is accountable for the effectiveness of the QMS. Top management must evaluate the resources the quality management system needs and determine how to provide them. Top management is tasked with ensuring the quality management system achieves its intended results. Top management must make it happen. To that end, top management is expected to demonstrate customer focus, establish and communicate the quality policy, define organizational roles and responsibilities. These are not new requirements. What is new is the auditor is expected to audit top management, not the management representative as to how all of this is done. Expect an auditor to interview a president, vice president, or CEO to know that top management is involved and is holding themselves accountable for the effectiveness of the quality management system. So what is leadership? Leadership is the way we manage the organization. Top management must take accountability for the effectiveness of the quality management system. When auditing leadership, we look to see if top management is providing guidance and has a good understanding of the quality goals and has integrated those goals into the business plan. One of the new additions to ISO 9001 with the 2015 edition is the requirement of top management to ensure the integration of the quality management system requirements into the business process. So what does this mean? It means ISO 9001 is the way business is done. The QMS is part of how materials are purchased, how they are modified into a saleable entity, and how the customer is treated by the organization. How does top management integrate the QMS into business? Management must communicate the importance of the quality management system, provide the necessary resources to implement the quality management system, engage, direct, and support personnel involved with the QMS, and ensure the quality management system achieves its intended results. The QMS should be part of the day-to-day -day business not a separate entity. How does top management communicate? Leadership starts with the establishment of the quality policy. The quality policy tells everyone, all the interested parties, the employees, the customers, the suppliers, here is how we want to be perceived. It needs to be appropriate for the business. A small organization with 10 employees may have a different quality policy than a multinational organization with thousands of people on the payroll. So how does top leadership want to be perceived? Do they want everyone to think of them when they're looking for the lowest cost provider? Do they want customers to think of their organization when they want precision and accuracy? Do they want to be perceived as a company that's really easy to do business with and someone you feel comfortable working with? This tells the person taking orders how to act when a customer has a special need or request. This perception tells supplier, helps suppliers to understand the organization's standards for accepting materials. And it tells customers what they can expect uh, for help when they call and need us. Think about some of the slogans you may have heard. In the United States, for example, there's Maxwell House Coffee, good to the last drop, or Budweiser, the king of beers, or General Electric's slogan, we bring good things to life, or Federal Express, when it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. All of these slogans express a perception. 
That perception should be identified in the quality policy. You must consider the quality policy as a shortcut to understanding the direction and the intent of the organization. Top management guides the quality objectives with a quality policy. The quality policy provides a framework for setting quality objectives. So how do the two interrelate? Having defined how top management wants the company to be perceived, they now have to guide everyone on how to get there. The quality objectives are the how do we get there. It's important that quality objectives are measurable, monitored, and updated as appropriate. Something an auditor is going to be looking at is, a, is top management aware of the progress toward quality objectives at all times. Top management m must review the quality objectives more frequently than annually. If the only time top management gets an update on quality objectives is at the management review, then they are not meeting the requirements for leadership, and an auditor is going to have to dig much more deeply to see if the requirements of Section 5 of the standard are being met. In addition to defining the perception and framework for the quality goals, there are two points that must be in every quality policy. A commitment to satisfy applicable requirements for safety, the environment, legal requirements, reporting. The expectation is ISO 9001 companies meet requirements and are entities that are comfortable performing in a legal manner. The quality policy also needs to include a commitment to improve the quality management system. The quality objective should also reflect these needs. For example, if a goal is to improve the accuracy of filling product by 3%, it cannot be done by removing safety features. The organization cannot trick the safety features in order to get a better filling process. They must meet safety standards. Quality objectives are discussed more in a, the video in Section 6 on planning. So how is the, is the quality policy communicated? The quality policy should be communicated and understood. It's a requirement of the standard. Now, typically, the quality policy is posted in areas employees frequent, such as break rooms and near time clocks. Up until ISO 9001-2015, it was standard for the auditor to ask employees, what is your quality policy? The employee would read the policy to the auditor, and sometimes the auditor would ask, what does that mean to you? By the way, some auditors still do this, and it's okay. But since the implementation of ISO 9001-2015, auditors are more likely to ask employees, how do you minimize the risk of non-conforming product getting to the customer? What are the customer needs your work impacts? Now that sounds like a disconnect, but it's not. The quality policy should be giving the employee the guidance on that way of how they want to be perceived. The answer still comes from the quality policy and how top management wants the organization to be perceived. But top management should communicate what it means for each individual's contribution to the process, not just a broad generalization. It needs to be taken to all levels of the company. Top management leadership and customer focus. The requirements for customer focus have not really changed. What has been clarified is the leadership role of top management. Top management is responsible for communicating the customer's statutory and regulatory requirements and making sure they are understood and met. Top management is responsible for the risks that can affect conformity to requirements of the product or service, and top management is responsible for enhancing customer satisfaction. For example, if your normal customer base is automotive, and a new customer is in the medical device industry, it is the responsibility of top management to direct the investigation into the regulatory and statutory needs of the medical device customer, and then ensure adequate training is arranged so that everyone who touches that product is aware of how they can affect 
the, produ the product and the risks and the meeting of the requirements. Risk related to conformity of product and the ability to enhance customer satisfaction needs a little more explanation. So here's an example. Suppose a pharmaceutical company makes a slow-release decongestant. The patient takes the medicine once every eight hours and the decongestant lasts for that time period. Now the pharmaceutical company hires a second supplier. Now the second supplier does not have the same equipment to compress tablets as the first supplier. And while they use the same ingredients, because of the difference in the equipment, their tablets last four hours, but are turned over to the pharmaceutical company that sells them as lasting for eight hours. The person taking the tablets is not satisfied. Top management should be looking at risks like this in their business processes and address them before they receive customer complaints. They must look at risk in advance, not after the fact. Top management is also responsible for measuring and constantly improving customer satisfaction. Now frequently top management accomplishes this by contacting customers to determine satisfaction. And yes, it is the dreaded survey. Top management may also do this by reducing the number and severity of complaints. The survey and alternative ways of addressing and uh, determining customer satisfaction will be discussed in the video on performance evaluation, section 9 of the standard. So moving on to leadership and organizational roles and responsibilities. Prior to ISO 9001-2015, the standard required a management representative charged with the responsibility to oversee the quality management system. Unfortunately, in many cases, this led to the quality management system being compartmentalized and perceived as a system outside normal business processes something top management did not really have to take into account. They left it to the management representative. That perception should have changed with ISO 9001-2015 implementation in each and every business. The responsibilities of the management representative were distributed throughout the management members of top management. In addition, ISO 9001-2015 clearly states top management is responsible to ensure the process delivers their intended outputs. Top management is responsible to measure the effectiveness of the business as seen through the eyes of the customer and to create improvement through the use of the quality management system. As I said at the beginning, the impact on top management is they are now responsible. They do not delegate it they must own it. There's no further reference in the standard to a management representative. Now it is important to note there is no requirement to eliminate the management representative. If your revision to the 2008 systems works well and top management is involved as they should be, then there's nothing that requires you to remove the management representative. Go ahead and keep them. So, in conclusion on Section 5 of Leadership, prior to ISO 9001-2015, the responsibility for the quality management system was often misinterpreted to mean the QMS was, responsible was the responsibility of the management representative, and top management was not directly involved in the QMS. ISO 9001-2015 makes clear leadership of the quality management system and the integration of the QMS into the business process rests with top management. One of the big changes was to clear up the perception of who is responsible for leadership. So that's it. You guys can do great. If you have questions, feel free to contact me. Here is my email at technicon1986 at sbcglobal.net or you can call me at my cell phone, or you can check us out at our website, www.technicon.com. Have a great day.